So I was looking for the next great TV to review and just then the Vizio OLED H1 popped up on BestBuy.com. So I figured I'd review the TV and compare it to the best OLED in the United States, the LG C10. So let's do it. What's up? Welcome to Everyone New. I am Be The Installer, a longtime TV and home theater contractor. Now I help people decide on what TVs and sound bars and smart products to buy. Feel free to subscribe and definitely set the notification bell to all so that you get every upload. And if you like the video, smash the like button. You can do it now. I promise I'm good for it. I'm either gonna save you some money or I'm gonna save you some headaches with this video. And if you have any questions or comments, hit me up below. I'm happy to answer any questions that I may be able to help with. So definitely make sure to comment below. So I've pretty much seen every TV that's come out in 2020. And so the Vizio OLED H1 was something I definitely had to get my hands on. I actually drove four hour round trip up to the Best Buy Ontario warehouse where I had to get it so that I get it before the weekend so I can get this video to you guys. I believe it's more readily available now so you shouldn't have to make such a trip. So I'm gonna go over how this thing looks with the cord unplugged, then I'm gonna light it up and see how it looks there too. And probably most interesting to you guys is I'm gonna compare it to the LG C10 and see if it's something that can save you a few hundred dollars or if it's gonna cause some headaches. So. I promise to give you some clarity on that. So right off the bat, the 55 inch Vizio OLED H1 was extremely well packaged. It was actually pretty hard to get the top off. They had added some harder than cardboard type wood-ish material protecting the TV along with the styrofoam and then some plastic straps holding it all together. Uh, I mean, it looked very smart. Once you pop that off, you could even see that they gave you a little red and green, it's okay to touch here, it's not okay to touch there kind of situation. So that was very useful. So the back of the TV had a little bit more of a cheap plasticky feel to it. I don't really think that's that important, but I just wanted to acknowledge it. But there were a couple of cosmetic things that I, I wasn't a big fan of. First, the stand. It took a bit to get it together. It has like 16 screws and four different bags and you need at least 12 of them to get started. How they pack the Vizio TV actually allows you to get access to the bottom of the TV better than the LG to put the stand on, but the back is a little bit odd and I'm not a fan. It kind of looks like a stiletto pump or something. So I'm used to moving TVs around by myself and when I was trying to turn this around, there was not a good way to set it down since the back there's just a little square piece in the middle. It's kind of like a, a three wheel motorcycle where you have the two wheels in the front and one wheel in the back not quite as sturdy as a four-wheeler. Um, it won't completely tip over, but it's just wobbly and it's a bit odd. So they've taken some design time to kind of cut part of the back out and give you this like extensive channel to run cords through. So, you know, on one side is the power cord and everything else goes the other way, like most TVs. But I mean, it's, it's quite extensive. I had to bend my HDMI cords ahead of time to get them to fit in. So that's Right off the bat, something you really don't want to have to mess around with your HDMI cords. Over time, these HDMI cords can take a beating, so really it's just better to have them on the side or the back, or even if it's going to be downward facing, just give a little bit more room so that you can access the HDMI ports. Note to Vizio, I would kind of bail on this whole idea. I mean, really, it's way too much thought put into where the HDMI cords are gonna run. I mean, if it's on a stand, you really just need something uh, on the pedestal that will hold them tight. And if it's gonna be hung on the wall, I mean, TV mounts provide you with areas to attach zip ties. So there's really no point in digging out half the back of the TV just so you can run one power cord down the side and have the HDMIs coming in the other direction. Seems like a big waste of time and it's probably a big waste of time of me even talking about this. Because in the end, they do provide you with four HDMI ports. The TV does boast two HDMI 2.1s that do 4K at 120. It has VRR and FreeSync and it has game mode. And it does have eARC so you can connect you know, your Dolby Atmos soundbar to HDMI 1. It doesn't have G-Sync on this TV and it only has the two HDMI ports, so you're not gonna be able to have both consoles and you know, computer gaming. The fourth HDMI is on the side and a couple other things, you know, ethernet, optical, out ports for audio, not much else going on. But that's just the outside and the back. 
probably everything that doesn't matter to most people. So when I was thinking about doing these videos, I thought about doing just a review and then doing a comparison, but I just figured it'd just be much more interesting to just compare them right off the bat. So I decided to just mount this 55 inch H1 OLED under my 55 inch LG C10 OLED. So the Vizio OLED H1 has the same 300 by 200 millimeter pattern that the LG has. It's a little bit weird of a pattern, but it does allow you to connect to most standard flat mounts. If you have an, a little arm mount that you're gonna put it on, you just have to make sure it's one of the arm mounts that has the little extension pieces, just that you know the, the square 200 by 200 millimeter pattern won't work for this TV. And when sitting underneath the C10, you can see the H1 by Vizio has the exact screen of all the different Vizio models besides the new G10. And I was extremely excited to turn it on, but when I did, I remembered that like most Vizio TVs, you get to sit and watch about an hour firmware update depending on how fast your internet is. I mean, it probably wasn't an hour, but I did like just disappear for a bit, went in the backyard, hooked up the sprinkler for the kids, grabbed a tasty beverage, came back in, it was still going. I don't know, I got lost doing some other things, finally came back in and it was done. So Vizio TVs typically have a pretty long firmware and unfortunately they just have some circles that rotate and it doesn't it gives you no idea how long it's going to take but once it's updated and on the home screen ah picture quality looked fantastic there's a lot of detail and a lot of rich color and even though it's the vizio smartcast home screen i wasn't mad at it it's not my favorite home screen and you know, to be fair it has most of the apps that you'd want but really the only one that i've a uh, big fan of is a Samsung Smart TV. Uh, besides that, I just don't really use TVs to bring their own content to the table. But back to the TV, very nice start. I'm pretty stoked at this point. And I've seen all of the LEDs and OLED TVs that are around this price point. So the X900H, a very popular gaming TV, the X950H, the Hisense H9G, both really good looking TVs. And I have to say, this Vizio OLED TV knocks them out of the park. The level of detail on the screen and the level of blacks, it's just not comparable when you're going up against something like this OLED TV. And I'm definitely a little biased towards the OLED TVs. I'm a bit spoiled now that I've been looking at this LG C10 for so long, but if you go to the stores, you guys can see for yourself that the, the brightness is not such a big factor when you can get these perfect blacks in my opinion. And the OLED TVs still have a good amount of brightness. So unless you're in a substantially bright room, I think the OLED TV is the way to go. So one of the first things that I wanted to check out because I had heard it was good was the color gradient. And as told by some of my favorite people that I follow, uh, there is a great color gradient on this TV and it's very similar to the LG C10, but the big difference is the Vizio OLED can actually get black and then above black. So if you see in the first strip there, there's actually two different colors where if you look up at the OLED, it's actually just a larger black square. There's no definition between black and just above black. So after that quick color test, I wanted to get into Disney Plus and check out some of these MCU movies on Dolby Vision. And in Dolby Vision, with settings that were very similar, I found the light and color to have more pop than the LG C10. I mean, the definition in people's faces and clothing is amazing. I'm not sure if you can see here, but in the faces or in the detail in the hair and the clothing, the backgrounds. I mean, look here at the chubby depressed Thor in his cardigan sweater. Just so much more detail in the Vizio. Uh, and the shadows, darker parts in the scene, as I said, just have more definition than the C10 all around. So the Dolby Vision, fantastic quality, like a 10 out of 10 in colors, amazing depth to the picture. The blacks are black and still has separation in the darker tones. And it's actually quite stunning. I'm not really sure why the LG can't look like this. I mean, is it too good to be true? But that's not all the story. So hold the phone. Don't just go buy this quite yet. You gotta watch the rest of the video here because I got a couple things to tell you about. And when I was watching that Dolby Vision stuff, I was about six feet away and I was super impressed. But then I got a little closer to the TV and I started noticing a couple things. First, when I paused the TV just to get a real close look and see that definition, I noticed that in the Vizio, there was some pixels dancing around and I was a little concerned about that. Uh, but then I noticed at the top and the bottom of the widescreen bars uh, that there was a white line across the top and the bottom and there was no such line on the LG C10. So people are already a little bit concerned about burn-in on TVs like this. And so to see dancing pixels, uh, to see you know the increased brightness in Dolby Vision, but to then see these white lines at the top and the bottom, 
Uh, you know, it doesn't make me too stoked about that and I just wonder if that's just an abnormality that I'm seeing or if that happens often. And it wasn't a huge deal so I exited out of Disney Plus and I popped it into game mode on the Xbox. The screen actually blacked out a few times trying to get into Fortnite. Uh, my kids were trying to play it. It was kind of weird at first. I'm not really sure what went down and I'm, it, this wasn't intended to be a gaming video. Uh, but. They did have a couple issues. Uh, once it kind of stabilized, it looked really good. So again, kind of like the LG C10, it doesn't look like it loses much in game mode, whereas a lot of the LED TVs, you know, they really kind of, you know, turn to crap when you put them in game mode as far as the picture quality and the brightness. But uh, the, the Vizio looked pretty good in game mode. And so back to everything besides gaming. Remember when I said I wanted to take it out of Dolby Vision and see how it looked? So on non-Dolby Vision apps, uh, specifically Netflix, it kind of threw me for a loop. I just randomly turned on the movie Django on Netflix and the color of the Vizio that seemed to be really good in Dolby Vision just wasn't as good on Netflix. It was unwatchably orange. I mean, it was extremely orange and I had to mess with the settings and turn the color way down to fix it. But that kind of took a lot of the fun out of the picture quality. And so out of Dolby Vision, the TV wasn't as bright as the C10, nor did it have as good of blacks either. So there was some elevated blacks and it just wasn't popping like it was in Dolby Vision. It still had great detail though, and again, consistently across the board, I found this TV to be more detailed than the C10. So because I had already heard that this TV has elevated blacks, I wanted to see how good the TV looked on an OLED black uniformity test. So I got myself into a little OLED testing screen, and I started with the black. The right side of my screen is lit up on all black. Check it out. As I got above black, it was a little better. I started to see a, a frame of banding around the TV at 5%. The LG, it was fine with the same signal. So I don't wanna to totally freak out because I didn't even notice this without doing this black testing. But like I said, I'm not the only one that has this going on. My dude from Stop the FOMO said that this is a processing issue and should be able to be corrected with a firmware update. and. That's above my pay grade to be honest, but I'm just trying to report what I'm seeing and what I would recommend from a practical sense, but you can clearly see there's some processing issues. I mean, the dancing pixels, the odd banding, and this is supposed to be blacked out screen being lit on the edge, so that was definitely a buzzkill. So I'm really torn. I wanna go on, but I feel like we've hit a bump in the road, so let's consider our options here. Though the design is not as pretty and the HDMIs are a little jammed under this hidden channel, the Vizio H1 OLED looks like the LG C10 from the front, which is a good thing. And similarly, when you turn it on, it has a great picture and it even has more detail than the C10 across the board. With the added brightness and the definition and depth, I really liked the Vizio picture over the C10 on Dolby Vision, which is almost enough to justify this product, being that it's a lot less than the C10, it's better in Dolby Vision, and it's a lot less than the C10. But out of Dolby Vision, it didn't look as good, not as bright, not as dark. But it also makes me wonder why the LG can't get a little bit more definition out of their screen. I mean, is that the trade-off? Uh, I don't think so, and I just feel like there's a little bit more definition to be had from the LG C10 too. And if these issues were fixed, I would absolutely recommend it over a lot of TVs, a lot of LED TVs like the Sonys and the Samsungs, anything less than the Samsung Q90T, I would totally recommend this TV over it because it has fantastic blacks, fantastic color volume, and these LED TVs can't get there, especially the ones that are under $1,500. And most of those LED TVs weren't that bright anyway, so the trade-off of having that perfect black versus you know, a pretty good amount of peak brightness, I, I would take the Vizio OLED if they fix those issues. And as you can see, a lot of people are really happy with this TV, so I've seen a lot of good reviews, but I have seen a couple uh, reviews talking about similar things that I'm speaking of. So they have a couple months until Black Friday, so Vizio, get on it. If this is something you can fix with a firmware, if you can get these black levels back down to zero, or just replicate what you got going on for Dolby Vision across the board, I think you'd have a winner here. So Vizio's first OLED TV looks fantastic. If I was gonna compare it to some of these LED TVs, I probably would go for it and hope that they'd fix that firmware update. But if I had this kind of money and I'm looking to spend $1,300 on a 55 inch TV, maybe I'd reach a little bit further and grab the LG or the Sony OLEDs. But I am a little disappointed that my LG C10 doesn't look quite as good 
in Dolby Vision as this Vizio does. So I'm really excited to see what Vizio has in store for us. Hopefully they get better. Hopefully the firmware update comes. If not, hey, there's always next year, right? As always, I hope the honesty is appreciated. Smash the like button if it is. Make sure to check out some of the other videos that I have on all these 2020 TVs and beyond. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you're notified when I upload a video. And just remember with my help, you can be the installer.